And uh, the title of this message tonight is Ushering in God's Presence, Part 2. Ushering in God's Presence. So one of the points I want to make tonight, there are things that we can do to usher in God's presence. Thank God. Thank you. And we want to teach one of those things, God, that we're going to, uh, we really God, that we're going to practice that very thing tonight oh, so that you be refreshed, okay? Just a little bit by review. In Psalm 149, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord, sing it to the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation. So praise praise being said means to boast in, and to boast and boast in God, to make a clear sound. Uh, praise isn't just thinking. Praise that you, you begin to make a sound. Amen. So it's hard to sing without <laughs> announcing the <laughs> pronouncing the words, okay? It means to make a show. It literally means to be clamorously foolish. Wow. And uh, you know, people People, the natural mind can't comprehend things in the spirit. If someone with a carnal mind were to walk in, and, and here you go, we're, we're, we're going round and round the, the Jericho March thing, uh, yeah. you know, they, they think, well, babe, what, what, kind of, what, what kind of church are you all? Yeah. Well, we're, we're a biblical one. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it means to be clamorously foolish. It means to rave. It means to celebrate. It means to shine. When, when you meet God in such a way, I tell God this almost every day, God, I thank you that I'm not in hell. Yes, because if, if and let me put the let me say the same thing another way. What what really motivates us to celebrate when you've been down for so long? It looks like up to you. Yeah. When you come out of something, you're so grateful that you're out of that, oh, yeah. and you're yeah, see exactly. because there's been a such a drastic change that there's a celebration that you're so you're you live in a realm of gratefulness and thankfulness because uh, there could have been. Things could have been, I, I could be in hell, let's put it this way, I could just be in hell right now. So praise the Lord, sing it to the Lord a new song. Uh, let the saints praise in the congregation, let Israel rejoice. Okay, uh, church uh, ought not to be a drudgery. You, you ought to be able to, if you come into a church service, we ought to be able to tell the difference between, am I in a funeral home or am I a resurrection yeah, center? Right. Yeah. We should be able to tell the difference, okay? You know, it, it should be so quiet, you know, yeah, whispering, you know. But, uh, so let Israel rejoice. The word rejoice means brighten up, cheer up, to be glad, to be merry, to be gleason. It means to make joy. So let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let, let the children of, of Zion be joyful. We're going to talk about that some tonight. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let, this, let them praise his name in the dance. Now, can, can you praise God in the dance? Yes. yes. Okay. I mean, just remember now, we talked about Miriam. Wow. Remember when yeah. uh, four, the children of Israel, 400 years of bondage, and then God began, God raises up the deliverer Moses, and they bring 10 plagues later, God brings them out, and they're carried by the Red Sea, and Pharaoh, type of Satan, that 600 choice chariot, which speaks the ruling spirit, that then every other chariot in Israel, reaching every demonic power, they came after Israel, or they're carried by the Red Sea, to bring them right back into the very bondage, God has just brought them out of it. Okay, so, uh, what, what happened there was that when, the, when, the, when they drowned in the, in the sea, when they drowned in the Red Sea, they got on the other side, then Miriam grabbed the tambourine, she went out and started dancing, and the other people went out after her. The other women went out after her and started dancing. So there was a celebration, there was a dancing, because after 400 years of bondage, yeah. See what I'm saying? Oh, after 400 years of bondage, oh, yeah. after being slavery, hard taskmasters, and they God brought them out, and here they are, camped by the Red Sea, they still think they have to go back to captivity, and that God drowns their enemies in the Red Sea, and then when they're on the other side, they begin to celebrate, so it's so, it's so automatic to dance, okay? It's so automatic to shout. You don't, when you become a Christian, you don't stop dancing, you just change partners. Amen. Okay, so there's a dancing, and then we looked at uh, David, that David uh, came out, and then when he, he won the, when he became king, he wanted to bring back the, the ark of God to the city that he loved, to the people that he loved, and uh, when he brought back the ark to the city of Jerusalem, he came back with dancing, he began to take off his royal robes, and, and he came back and he was dancing. The Bible said, David danced before the Lord with all of his might. Okay, so there needs to be that freedom that he, he valued when David became king, what he wanted to bring to the people that God wanted to be king over, what he wanted them to have was the ark that speaks of the presence of God. Yeah. So he, he's so joyful, he's so grateful that in the years of Saul, 
There were many years knowing that the ark was had been taken away by the Philistine, mm-hmm. and for many years the they didn't have the ark, and no one even bothered to ask, "Where's the ark?" Mm-hmm. Which speaks of the presence of God. And there be people come to church not for years, but even decades, and not even, not even ask, "Where's the presence of God? Where's the anointing?" Okay, so David understood. And he wanted to bring the anointing, the Ark of God, back to the city of Jerusalem, to the people he had been called to be king over. So he's so excited that he's bringing back the anointing, so that basically you got to see yourself as a remnant, and God called you to bring back the presence of God, the Ark of God, the anointing of God, to the people, okay? And to our city, this is, this is our Jerusalem. All right. Okay. Okay, we're going to pick up the story, so I think that's about as far as we got. Uh, a few days ago, and they were, let, let them praise his name in the dance, let them sing praises unto him with the tambourine and with the harp. Now, the question that, well, I got one more thing to say on that because I didn't, I didn't get to this. Turn to Psalm 30. Psalm 30, and uh, we're just uh, bouncing off things in Psalm 149, and we're bringing, we're appropriating to where we are, to our church, where we are right now. And in our life, and in our and our families, in the church, and we wanted to bring the anointing to our city. Okay, in Psalm 30, okay, remember um, the the quote: We're going to sing, we're going to praise, we're going to rejoice, we're going to be joyful, we're going to praise God in the dance. Why? The question then becomes why, and uh, I'll answer that just a little bit. And in Psalm 30, verse one, I will extol thee. The word extol me. Now I'll raise you up. I'll I will rise, O Lord, for thou hast, you have lifted me up, and thou hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, I cried unto thee, and God, you have healed me. That's a good reason to, to praise him, to lift him up, right? Okay, for God, I cried, and you, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought my soul up from the grave. I was lost. Now, now you've kept me alive. You brought me, not only have you kept me up from the grave, you've kept me alive that I should not go to the, down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. Do you realize that there are people that come to church, not for weeks, not for months, not even years, in some cases decades, and they still, they've heard that right there thousands of times, still don't even bother saying in the church service. See? The, the, the Bible said that the dead cannot praise thee. Okay, so there, that's in the book of Psalms. Okay, so sing it to the Lord, you say to me, and give thanks at the remembrance of the Holy Dead, for his anger endureth for a moment, but in his favor, see, once we were lost, but now we're saved. In his favor is life, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, remember the joy coming, joy cometh in the morning, type of resurrection. Verse 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Why? Because God, you have turned for me my mourning, my mourning, my depression, my heaviness, my lamentation, my wailing, my crying. You have changed my mourning into so many someone that have been weighed down, depressed, and heavy. Come on, and, and weeping, and show me someone that that when they get healed, they get done when they come up from the bed. See, they don't. Yeah, they can't help but dance. They can't yeah. help but sing. They can't help but shout. They can't help but pray. They can't help but worship. Because they were so down, it looked like up to them. And now when they're up here, now God, here's why, here's why I can't shut up. Because you've turned my morning into... Come on, say to God. See, dead phony religion would just come and we sit. We look straight ahead. Nothing ever happens. You can't wait to get up. But there's a way that you meet with God in His presence is full of joy. Amen. Okay, God, you have turned from me my mourning into dancing. Amen. And here's what the word, uh, I'll define this more a little bit. The word dancing means to twist or twirl in a circular motion. Did you see that a little while ago? Mm-hmm. To twist or twirl in a circular motion. God has put off, you have put off my sackcloth, that's you did mourning, and you have girded me with gladness. That garment of mourning, that garment of heaviness, that garment of depression, you've taken off of me, and now you've put a robe of righteousness upon me. You have filled me with gladness. My depression has now been changed to happiness. I'm so happy, I can't shut up. I'm so happy, 
I can't stop singing. I'm so happy. I can't stop breathing. I'm so happy. I can't stop worshiping. I'm so happy. I can't sit down. I'm so happy. I can't stand still. I'm so happy. I've got to dance. I'm so happy. I can't help but sing. I can't help but sing. I can't help but the kids in the house are gone. I can't help but the rebel are gone. I can't help but pray. I can't help but the giving you present. I can't help but can you turn my morning into dancing. You've taken this happiness yes. off of me and you've clothed yes. me with gladness. Yes. To the end of my glory, that I may sing praise unto thee, that I may sing praise and not be silent, that I may sing, yes. that I may yes. sing praise, yes. and to think that I won't be silent. Amen. Uh, we don't want to be silent in the house of God. Oh Lord, we don't want to be silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Now, here, here's something that this is something that just recently I've been I've been telling God uh, just about every day, and uh, we we know that in these if we if we say you we pray God won't have it God won't have it the what no, we, if, He won't have it the presence of His people and in His presence is full of some and the joy of the Lord that become their strength. So then this revelation came. The presence of God is really what's going to make it heaven to us. Amen. Yes. So when you get when you when you learn to love the presence of God and you value the presence of God and you do things to protect the anointing and the presence of God within your life, then you that you understand. How many have ever been in the presence of God so powerful you don't want to leave? You don't want to make a move. You don't even want to step upon an ant. You know what I mean? You wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare. Uh, uh, allow a, 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 a bad thought about someone yeah. because you're so in the present right. you don't want to do anything that, that would take away from the presence yeah. of God. Very so good. then when you understand that you enjoy it, His presence is full of stuff. Joy. And what God's trying to give you eternally? Joy. Because yes. you're going to be is so in His presence. Yes. You're going to be so in His presence yes. in heaven. Yes. If some of you are happy now, think how you're going to be in heaven. Oh. Come on, it's going to be loud in heaven. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 But if we show it, God, I'm desperate. I want to. I got to be with you tonight. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to sing. I may not. You, there may be a time you can You don't feel like singing. You don't feel like praising. But you put your flesh in the subjection. You put it on the God of for the spirit of heaviness. You offer the sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice. Sometimes you don't feel like singing. You don't feel like praising. You got to offer up a sacrifice. Come on, take your God. Now, there's something that happened. We're going to look at some different aspects here in the, in the praise and worship. In Psalm 32 and verse 7, God, you are my hiding place. Yes. Now, this is very important that every one of us really need to evaluate. If something hurts us or wounds us or provokes us or agitates us, something really goes wrong, who or what do we go to to comfort us? See, when people, one little thing goes wrong, if a, if a fly lands in their watermelon and they become a, a serial killer, they're so far from being ready. See, they were exposed. That when we come to the plate, that, that we don't go to alcohol for comfort, we don't go to immorality for comfort, we don't go to drugs for comfort, we go to the Holy Spirit who is the comforter. Is the comforter. So when we go to the comforter, the comfort, okay, so when, when something goes wrong, something goes bad, who did he? Who did the God? You are my, you are my hiding place. You, in other words, you are my shelter. You are my covering. You are, uh, you are my private place of protection. Amen. So you can go to God, and first of all, you don't need to pretend that you're not hurting because He already knows we're hurting. Even if we, even my God shall supply all of your. When we pretend we have no needs, it's hard for God to move. Okay, so when you when you say. This hurt me. This provoked me. This wounded me. This said, uh, you know, God, get this off of me. There's ways that you can be delivered. To God, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. God, you shall, the word preserve me, you shall guard me. You shall protect me. You shall maintain me. You will be as a watchman. You will conceal me from trouble. 
that were troubled me, distress, affliction, tribulation, and adversary, sorrow, and opponent. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me round about with songs of deliverance. We got some more of the books and uh, songs of deliverance back there. Okay, so how many's ever how many's ever sang a song and you got delivered? How many ever came in with something oppressing you? And you started singing, you started praising. Oh, yeah, you don't know yeah. exactly when it left. Yeah, All you know is you yeah. came in oppressed, yeah. you started singing, you started praising, you started worshiping, you started praying, you reached out by faith and touching. All you know is that your beard has turned to fruit for that. Something happened. Come on, say, don't God. There's an anointing when we come into the house of God that certain people have an anointing to sing. There's a prophetic anointing. And there's a, what we call the song of the Lord. And there's a prophetic song of the Lord. And then there's what we call songs of deliverance. There's all, those are all different. There's a song of deliverance that can be so powerful, so anointed, that people get set free. Yeah. That, that individuals can be set free. Families can be set free. They can break things off of churches. They can break things yeah. off of city. They can break things off of nation. Yeah. They can break things off of yeah. planet Earth. Yeah. There's some things that are so powerful that when you speak and release that thing, yes. see what, what we got to understand, what we don't want to do is come in here and be silent. What do we say? Earlier? Well, I will not be silent. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm not, I'm not going to be silent. Come on. No. Come on. The, the truth is, silent. out there in the world, we weren't silent. No. no. Right. Come on, we talk quite well yeah. out there. Yeah. All right, we made a lot of noise out there. Wow. We're not going to be dead quite and, and in here. But Amen. there's a, thou shalt come as me round about with songs of deliverance. The word deliverance, I mean, sounds of escape and songs of safety. God wants you to be safe. Okay, now uh, turn to the right just a little bit, a couple of pages, Psalm 36. And I, I just, this is just two little scriptures right here. That I absolutely love these scriptures. Psalm 36, verse 7. How excellent is your loving kindness, O God. The, the word loving kindness means your favor, your beauty, your mercy, and your goodness. How excellent is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. Mm. Okay, now when you come to the way that you know you can trust God. See, unto thee, O Lord, do I place my trust. I trust in the Lord with all my heart, soul, strength. I uh, lean down to my own saying, In all my ways I shall acknowledge you, God, and God, you shall direct my path. That's Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6. Okay, when it said, God, your, how excellent is your loving kindness, O God, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They, who? They that trusted God, they shall be abundantly satisfied. Yeah. They shall be, so when you begin to trust God for your life, and remember, that's a process we learn, just like when you go through grade school and, and junior high school, you learn, there's a whole lot that you learn. That's the way it is when you come to God. You learn, you grow, you're changing yeah. constantly. You never come to a place that you exhaust everything, that uh, you, know, you can be, you know, 60, 70, 80 years old and still be learning because you never exhaust the things of God. Right. So he said, you shall be, how many want to be abundantly satisfied? Oh, yeah. Abundantly oh, satisfied. Yeah. See, that, that's what God has for us, and we need to understand. There are certain things that watch how this happens, okay? How excellent is thy living kindness, that children of men put their trust in thee, God, under the shadow of thy wing. They that put their trust in thee shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of the anointing of your house. If I could just get to the anointing, if I could just get to his house and get in the anointing, get in the presence of God, thou hast... The, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the anointing of your house, and thou shall make them drink. drink thou shall make them. Drink. Thou shall make them drink. The and we talked about earlier. When you get sight, you don't stop dancing. No. You just change partner. Yeah. And when you become a Christian, you don't stop drinking. Amen. You just don't drink alcohol. You drink the spirit. Yeah. You drink the new wine. Yeah. Yeah. So what you don't church and not learn how to drink the new wine. Amen. That's why when you were doing the Jericho march, I would say, drink deeply, drink deeply, drink deeply of the Spirit yes. of God. See, because what, what God wants us to do when we come together, you want to be so full, abundantly satisfied when you leave here, when you see a snake, you're not going to talk to it. And when you've got trouble when they start listening to a snake, right? So when the, 
And when you go out, when you leave here, you can be so full of truth that when you see a lion snake, you're not going to tune in. Amen? You recognize this is a snake. Okay. They shall be... This is what God wants to bring His people to, that they be so abundantly satisfied with the anointing of your house, and God thou shall make them drink of the river of thy legalism, law, misery, the river of what? The rivers of His pleasure. That means something that is very pleasant and very delightful. When... When you and I learn that the things of God, He said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your way. When you learn how to get in the breath, that the things of the Spirit, that the wine of the Spirit is better than the wine of the world. That in His presence is fullness of joy. Not in a church building. Not necessarily in a church building because people can come to church and not learn how to get in His presence. So that's what we're doing. We're learning how to get in His presence and be awakened in the Spirit realm and learn how to drink. How many have learned how to drink of the Spirit of God in prayer? Yes. How many have learned how to drink from the Spirit of God in singing? Yes. How many have learned how to drink from the presence of God in praising? Yes. Have you learned how to drink during worship? Yes. Have you learned how to drink in dancing? Yes. Have you learned how to drink in shouting? Yes. Have you learned how to drink when the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yes. Have you learned how to drink when the song of the Spirit is coming forth? Yes. Have you learned how to drink when the Word being preached? Yes. Have you learned when the, when the music yes. plays? Have you learned how to soak? And if so, and we see, and we learn how to drink, baby. Yeah. And we learn how to drink through the point that we come under the influence. Yeah. We come under the influence yeah. of the Spirit of God. Yeah. How many's ever come in and you just you didn't feel spiritual, you didn't feel good, yeah. you didn't even feel saved. But you knew you were saved. You didn't, feel, you didn't feel, come on, I don't feel spiritual all the time. I feel dry sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel like a normal human being sometimes. But I was just I'm just the same when I feel normal yeah. yes. Yes. than when I feel dripping in the Spirit. Yes. I mean, you can, first time you feel dripping wet. Yes. But you're just the same. You're not lost when you don't feel His presence. His whisper, but sometimes He'll withdraw yes. so, so you won't trust in feelings, okay? Yes. But see, you can learn those things that we can do. We can reach out and touch Him. We can, the devil doesn't want you to pray, doesn't want you to sing, doesn't want you to pray, doesn't want you to worship, and doesn't want you to be awakened. Because what will happen is you become so happy, the devil will lose control of you. You'll come up among the world, out of the world, you'll separate yourself, you'll come to the burning bush, and God will give you what he gave Moses. At that burning bush, you'll separate, you'll climb up to the upper chamber, and God will give you what he gave the hundred point in the upper chamber. Come on, say God. Somebody praise him. Get ready, get ready. Okay, so here's what they that trust in God shall be abundantly satisfied with the anointing of your house, that shall make them drink of the river yes. of thy pleasure. Amen. One of the best things that I can do as a pastor is get out of God's way. Amen. Just get out of his way. Let, yes. let God be God and let God's enemies be scattered. Okay? Amen. Let them drink of the river of your pleasure. Yes. Now look, look at the next verse. For with you, God. Is the fountain of life. Fountain of life. Okay, so let's let's just let's just say there are two fountains, and you drink of one fountain is death. And then another one you drink of it, it's life. Okay, you can look you can look at two people who look dead but look alive, you can tell what they've been drinking. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, you see <laughs> Who you been hanging? Get it, come on, get away from Jerry Springer. Get away from the softball guy. Jerry Springer now. See, that what will happen is you will become so alive, you become so quickened, you be so the the man shall not live by bread alone. The word live there means man shall become so lively. That's why some of you can't shut up. That's why you can't be still. That's why you just can't sit down. Come on, that's why you can't stop singing. That's why you got to stand up. That's why you got to dance. That's why you just like. That's why you got to stomp your feet. Be so alive. I can't. For with thee is a fountain of life. Yes, for real. And in thy light we shall see light. Let me just put this in here. Okay. And in uh, John chapter 4, I think 12 and 13, says, If you drink of the water of the world, you'll thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I shall give you, it shall become in you a well. 
it shall become in you a well. So to find water in the desert, all you got to do is search within you. Yeah. Out of your belly, out of your belly, see, you are the well God deposits himself within you. You may not feel the well, you may not feel wet, but it's within you. Spring up, oh, come on, get it. Spring up, oh, well. Out of, the, uh, out of my belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow what? Amen. Let me make sure. Out of your belly shall flow a thimble? No. A night jumper full? No. Out of your belly shall flow what? So if we want, if we got, if we want a river to flow up, we got to drink deeply. What a bit. <laughs> now what happens is when the spirit, when you, when you accept right, so then whoever drinks of the water I shall give him, it shall become in him a well. It shall become in him a well. So then it's spring up a well. Get what you're doing that. Spring up. See, sometimes we got to, we got to speak to our spirit man. When, when all these people rose up against David, they wanted to kill David. David, David learned how to get along with God and he encouraged himself. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. Yeah. Oh, up, yeah. you've got to learn how to encourage yourself. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. So, see, sometimes, sometimes if you want to find God, you'll find Him within you. Yes. And when, when, you get to, when you get to that place, I'm telling you, you really, really, really grow. Yeah, I just absolutely love that scripture. Now, I want to enlarge upon that turn to Revelation chapter 4. You would, please? Revelation chapter 4, and let's start at uh, verse 8. Uh, I could show this whole chapter, but I won't for the sake of time. Verse 8, then the four beasts... Each of them had six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they, they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks unto him that sat upon the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat upon the throne, and they worship him. They fell down before him that sat upon the throne, and they worship him that liveth forever and ever, and they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. See, when you understand who God is and how big He is and His great love for you and everything that He's done for you, that all that He's done, all that He's doing, all that He will do, you will become so grateful. That you will just automatically you begin to give God the glory, you begin yes. to give God the honor, Amen. you begin to give give God yes. praise. So yes. thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Now listen to what he says here, and remember back there in Psalm 36. For thou hast created all things, yes. and for thy pleasure they are, and they were created. Yes. You were created for God to enjoy. Yes. You were created yes. for God to enjoy. Yes. Yes. See, uh, like Aaron, awesome. your children born for you to enjoy. Amen. See, and, and God created you and I to enjoy you. And the devil trying to make you feel rejected and hurt and wounded. The devil trying to make you feel alone, unloved, unwanted, unneeded, yes. worthless, oh, rejected. Oh, Come on. Sense of worthlessness, negative oh, self image, low self esteem. Yes. The devil trying to beat you down so that you never understand that God created you for his pleasure. You have been created to have a relationship with God. God became your father. You became a child. Come on, saints of God. As a godly mom and dad enjoy their children. Think yes. if a godly mom and dad can really enjoy their children, think how much more God, who is love, can love and enjoy you. You have been created for God's pleasure. Okay, this is about the sixth time that this come to me, so let me just say, Aaron, during pre-service prayer, the Spirit of the Lord just gave you just a little quick revelation. The little one. The little one clings. The little one mm -hmm. is a prophetic picture. Mm -hmm. Because the little one, the little one sense, senses 
the gift of God that I, the Lord thy God, deposit with you. For I, the Lord thy God, I love, and I have given you the gift of love. And she is attracted to, doesn't understand, she is attracted to the gift of love. And she is a prophetic picture of days to come because God's going to bring people to you. Amen. She's a prophetic picture of little ones, new believers, that God's going to bring to you because they will be attracted to the gift of love, the deposit of God. God has given you a gift. Amen. God's given you a gift. Amen. And she's a prophetic picture of things to come. That's why, that's why she claims that she holds because she senses that gift that she feels that. Because in that gift, because she feels that gift, she feels that love, she, that's where she finds her security. And God's going, to bring, God's going to bring people to you and you're going to lead them to God who is love who's given you this gift of love. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, somebody praise Him. Somebody praise Him. For the gift of love. Amen. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. God said, here's how I can... Here's how I can have fun. I'm going to greet people and enjoy them. Yeah. All right, God, my God. All right, now let's go back to uh, let's go back to Psalms 149. You know, uh, again, let remember we said, praise you, the Lord. Sing it to the Lord a new song. Uh, praise the Lord in the congregation. Let Israel rejoice. Let them be joyful in the God. Let me praise Him. Let him praise his name in the dance. Let him sing praises in the name of the tambourine in the heart. Why? Why? Because God takes pleasure. Hallelujah. Because God takes pleasure yes. in his people. Yes. Do you understand that God was so excited to see you come in the church tonight? Amen. That God was so excited that people would come to his house tonight. Because God takes pleasure. Because God takes pleasure. And his people, the word pleasure there in the Hebrew means that he's pleased, he's pleased with yes, to enjoy, yes. to be you're accepted, it gives favor, he delights in, and he approves. Oh, the Lord takes pleasure in his people, and he will beautify oh. the meek with salvation. Yes, Have you ever told you're gonna some people just are so saved they just look saved. God, you can be at Walmart. And you're not even in the spirit. You're going to somebody. My God, they're saved. Yes. As a Christian, you just know it. You just know it. I was a new believer. I, I was a new believer, and whack that as I went, you know. I'm telling you, when I first got saved, I, there's a lot going on up there. And I would look at people. I go, My God, that person's a Christian. I, re I remember being this is in the seventies. I remember as a new convert. I was in my hometown area. And I was in a store with my dad. And my dad was talking to the clerk, and I'm just standing there, and this man walks in the door. I didn't even know who the man was. The man walks in the door, and I go, my God, that man looks saved. And he looks at my dad. I go, he knows my dad's not saved. And this guy walks right up to my dad in front of me and starts witnessing. That's awesome. Amen. Just walks, just walks in the door. Never, never saw the man before. Never, I've never seen him since. He just walks in the door. I think he was a retired preacher. He just looks up. He walks in, and to me, he just looks saved. Yeah. He just, he's just he got a beautiful the meek of salvation. See, you know what happens is you get so saved, you don't have to dress. To draw attention to your body. Because yeah. you're going to be clothed in righteousness. Yeah. You're going to beautify the meek of salvation. Yes. And the anointing of the love of God, the Spirit of God, is so much more attractive oh. than some of body. Yes. 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 Very true. Boy, that's way. All body. We're going to get old. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, give it some time. Just yeah. right. give it some You're time. Come on, take the God. Yeah. Oh, my now, we're, now, we're going to go somewhere, okay? Yeah. The, the, I want, just that's don't have the mentality that you just come to hear something that we're not going to apply. Because I'm going to stop here just a little bit no. and we're going to apply this, okay? okay. Because God wants. Every one of us to enjoy. He wants his church to enjoy our salvation, to enjoy church, 
to enjoy God, enjoy a relationship with God, enjoy Christianity. We ought to have more fun than anybody. So what we got to do is set you free to have fun. And then His presence is full of some joy. Joy, joy. If you ever really get it so full in His presence that you're so joyful, you don't want to... I'm telling you, there's a place in God you don't even want to step on an ant. You don't want to make one the tiniest little thing. Mm-hmm. You even think twice mm-hmm. about squashing a cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> now that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what they did with the, had Paul if he would get a man. We got to learn. We got to learn how to get in this presence. The value of His presence to enjoy His presence. And there are things, there are things that will hinder the anointing. Every all day long, there's different things that will, if we let it, will take away. And there's things we can do to gain. If I walk in that bathroom, I have to focus because there's been about six things break down in that bathroom in the last forty. About six things in that one bathroom. We went from one dripping faucet. Then we tried to fix the one dripping faucet. Then we from the, the faucet couldn't be fixed. So we're going to put a new sink if we can't, but then the sink goes wrong. And then there's both of them are waters it shh, uh, going everywhere. And now the, the now the third time we got to work on the commode, if I just walk in there, i got to focus. Because I have thoughts about the parakeet. <laughs> so I, I know I've got to be careful because I can just walk in there. <laughs> See, the, seriously, watch yourself all day long. See, that you get in the present, and what happens is in His presence, not in church, in His presence is full of some joy. The hell doesn't want you to learn how to get in and enjoy His presence. Because in His presence is full of some joy. And the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. You become so strong when temptation comes, it won't even be a temptation. What, are, what, you want me to eat poison? Are you crazy? <laughs> That's what temptation becomes to you. That's it. Yeah. Right now. Now, you say, that, okay, we're going to sing, we're going to praise, we're going to be joyful, we're going to dance. Why? Because God takes pleasure in His people. That's why. Now, turn and, and the important now, He will beautify the meek with salvation. Yes. Okay, now, turn with me to Zephaniah, Z-E-P-H. That's a, just a little bit before the book of Matthew. Zephaniah. Now what we're going to do a little bit, we're going to we're going to we're going to begin to sing. We're going to begin to praise. We're going to begin to worship. Amen. We want you, we want you to experience God. We want you to touch God for yourself. Okay. We want you to learn how to sing, how to praise, how to worship, how to dance. Now remember though, this is extremely important is that we can learn how to dance very violently in here. But see, what He's after is holiness out there. Because mm-hmm. see, if we don't live right out there, mm-hmm. our dancing and our singing can be nothing but dead works. Yeah. Because our life, when, when what we say with the mouth and our life line up to the Word of God, and when there's no difference between who we are in here and out there, there's the anointing will come. Okay? Yeah. So yes. that... This is just my opinion. You don't have to believe this way, okay? But in my opinion, obedience is the highest form of worship. It's the highest form of worship, okay? And you, you'll learn now there are going to be people that will try to live dirty and come in and dance over, swing from the chandeliers, but it's it, they get nowhere. What they sing doesn't get any higher than their head. It's just they're what they're, their words just fall to the ground because they're living uh, in sin out there. And you cannot, God said in the Word, you cannot drink of the cup of the Lord, the cup of devils. Yeah. Okay, now Zephaniah, chapter 3. Now remember back there in Psalm 149, it started off with sing, praise, shout, mm-hmm. be joyful. Okay, so here we are in Zephaniah. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout. Okay, it's shouting in the Bible. Oh, yeah. yep. Psalms 47, verse 1 said, shout in the cup with the voice of triumph. We will not be ashamed of shouting in here. Amen. Come on, say the God. We'll go shout in here. Come on, let's just give a shout. God, we just shout in the God. We're not ashamed of shouting. We're not ashamed of shouting. We're not ashamed of shouting. We'll 
Sing the daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all of your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Okay, now there's four things there. Sing, shout, be glad and rejoice with all of your heart. I mean, that's your total being. In other words, you're going to really get involved in this. Your whole being is going to be in that, O daughter of Judah. Now the question would be this right here. I love that answer. Sing, sing. Shall be glad and rejoice with all of your heart. Why? Verse 15. Because God had taken away your judgment. Because God taken away the consequences for your sin. And okay, now, let me, let, me, let me say that, okay? Because uh, uh, I want to improve upon what I said Sunday morning. Remember when we talked about uh, uh, being delivered in Galatians 3.13? We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Okay, the, the word law there means principles. Okay, yeah. Those principles are God. There are certain certain truths, right? That, so when you when with the either truth or lie, you yeah. either leave living a truth or the lie. Okay, now an important aspect to, to put in there. Now, if you really stop in here with that saying, we have been redeemed from the curse. The curse. Yes. See the curse. Case we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. So when you violate the principles of God, there are consequences. But we've been redeemed. We don't have to do. Well, we don't have to do those sins. So we've been redeemed. We, there are principles of God that we still follow. That's what I'm trying to say. Sunday morning. There are still the principles of God. There are still the truth of God. There are certain things that all the, the nine of the nine of the original ten commandments are repeated in the New Testament. So we have been redeemed from the Curse. From the curse, okay? So the curses that come with the sin, yes. we've been redeemed from, we've Amen. been brought out of that, yes. so we're going to live above that, Amen. so we're, there are still Amen. principles that we live by, I won't say to God, Amen. but you have been given to us many that received Him, He gave you the power, power to become the sons of God, God, even to them that believe upon His name, secondly, act upon it, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit of God said, yeah, yes, So we God. want everything that God has for us. Because we have been redeemed, bought, yes. purchased. Yes. The price has been paid. Yes. So we're not going back under that. We've been delivered from the curse. We've been delivered from the curse of the law. So now we're entering to the blessing of Abraham. That we believe by faith. Right. That was just extra, okay? Just, okay. Much more than come. Okay, so when he, again, oh. when you understand this, when when there's something beyond just putting your body in a church building and tolerating a church service that maybe you don't understand, when you learn, when you learn to get in these places, they're saying, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out and touch you. I'm gonna come in contact with God. My Bible said if I praise, God will inhabit the praises so nobody going to tell me. No one going to tell me I can't praise you. No one going to tell me shut up. Don't let people tell you that you can't have this and you can't have that up there. I put you in no man's land. If I can't have that, don't tell me I can't have this. If I, don't tell me I can't. Yes, God said I can have this. And I'm going to get this because I want this. I've forsaken that, but don't let people tell you you can't shout, you can't say, you pray. don't let people say you can't prophesy, don't let people say you can't dance, don't, don't let people tell you you can't shout to God with the voice of trying. don't let people tell you you can't cast the devil or heal the sick or raise the dead, come on, take them, God, we, we want this, don't tell me I can't have that, can't have that, because I want this, don't put me in no man's hand. Amen. Okay, so sing, shout, rejoice with all of your heart. Be glad with all of your heart because God has taken away the consequences for your sin. You have been forgiven. Come on, say to God. Jesus took the penalty. Jesus took the curse upon the tree. All of our penalty from our sin, Jesus took it. Come on, say to God. So we, my God, when the weight of sin has been released off of you, we are a feel so different. We are feel so heavy. We can't shut up. We can't stop praising. We can't stop singing. We can't stop worshiping. We can't stop praying. We can't stop reading the Bible. We can't stop coming to church. We can't stop praying. We can't stop praying. We can't stop forgiving because unforgiveness is too costly. Amen. So sing, shout, do all the because God will take away your judgment. 
the yes, cover. That's awesome. Look at, look at the next thing. Yeah, God hears. And God hears. Cast out. Yeah. Cast out? Mm. Oh, I may know what you're talking about. And God has cast out. God has, <laughs> God has cast out your enemy. Enemy. Yeah. Oh, anybody had some enemies cast out of you? Yeah. Anybody had any fear cast out of you? Yeah. Any sickness cast out of you? Yeah. Anger devil? Yeah. Joel jacking yeah. devil? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, We've had some enemies cast out of us, yeah, Satan, God. Come on, Satan, God. Yes. So we're out of sin. We're out of shock. We're out of crazy. Why? Because God has taken away the yes. consequences of grace. You have been forgiven. Yes. Secondly, he has cast out. He cast, he's cast out your enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. The Lord is in the midst of thee. You shall not see evil anymore because you're not looking that direction. You come up from among them. You're not looking at that. Come on, Satan, God. The porn is no longer in your house. You're not looking at it. Looking up to Jesus. Amen. The Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. You're not looking. You're not looking for evil. You're looking for righteousness. And in that day shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion. Do not let your hands be slack. Now you're going to be casting out devil. You're going to be laying hands upon the sick. Your hands are going to be praising God. Amen. Okay, do not let your hands be slack. Look at verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. The Lord thy God's mighty. God in the midst of you is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice. Follow me closely now. Let's see if I can read the Bible, right? He rejoices over people who got a lot of money. No, enjoy. <laughs> if you're a millionaire, God's happy with you because no. you pay good time. That was said. No. A millionaire. No. He will rejoice over who? Over the joy. He will rejoice over you yes, Lord. with joy. Yes, Lord. See, that's what I'm telling you. When when God sees you, I'm going to church tonight. I want God to speak to me. Yes, yes. I want to pray. I want to praise Him. I want to come to the house of God. I want to praise Him. I want to worship God. I'm going to worship in the dance. And God sees you. He hears what you're thinking. He sees what's going on inside of you. God begins the joy over. He begins the joy over you. Because He takes pleasure in His people. He says, oh my God, look at my people coming to my house to worship me. And God begins to joy over thee. God in the midst of me is mighty. Come on, say, God in the midst of me is mighty. Mighty God. God's the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with, with joy. He will rest in his love. He will rest in his love. Yeah. Now what that means is he'll not remind you of his, your past. Come on, take of God. He will not remind you of your past because he does not remember it any longer. It tainted the blood that's on the other side. He will rest in his love. <coughs> Comma, the next thing, he will joy, he will joy over you, over who? Me. Over me, over no. us. <laughs> Come on, say, is that powerful? Yes. See, what we got to understand yes. is that when you begin to praise him, God has more fun than you and I. Yes. He loves singing. He yes. loves praise. Yes. He loves worship. Yes. He loves it so much when he hears it, he manifests himself there. Yeah. He will manifest himself in the praises. When praise begins to go, God said, there's the people that love me. They're praising me because they're grateful because they understand. They understand that how good God is, what he does. So you see, when you really understand, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sing to impress other people. I'm not, trying to sing or praise to brew up a tongue or interpretation or a prophecy. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to I'm yes, not trying to Lord. praise God to work up a song of the Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm so grateful. Oh, I forget Lord. about all of that. Yes, I forget Lord. about all that. Yes, and I just want to enjoy God yes, and come to the place. It is not a law. It's not about yes, ministry. Lord. It's about relationship yes, with God. When you say He will rejoice over you with singing. They're singing up there over you singing down here. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. I'm going to stop right there. Yes.
Let's stop right there. Let me explain that. Say a couple things that we're going to do. I'm going to give you a choice here. 